Hi, I'm Laura Izzy Bohr, and you're checking out you know, I got sold up com. Hi, Laura. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing good. Thank you, and thank you for taking the time for this interview. We appreciate it. I just want to kind of start at the beginning. You know, I was reading your bio and how you didn't really grow up in a musical household, but, you know, you eventually found influences like Stevie Wonder, Otis Redding, Donny Hathaway, uh, you know, on your own. So, you know, what made you gravitate towards them? Um, well, kind of, I mean, I suppose at the beginning, I mean, I wasn't aware of, you know, the influences that I was Mariah Carey and stuff like that and I, I mean I loved Ricky mm. with all my heart but it was kind of um, I hadn't really I liked music you know but mm. it wasn't like this passion until I heard yeah, I heard like James Brown on the radio and I was like who, who the hell is that like mm. what is this yeah. um, and then it was just you know found one person after the next and you know you go in one section in the, in the music store and you've got a whole list of um, I think just my eyes opened and my ears opened and, you know, I talk about this person, this artist, someone, and, and then they say, oh, well, you know, if you like this, you love him, with Simone. It was like, mm. so like from probably 13 to 7, was probably the most exciting years mm. of discovery for me. Because yeah. I, I really had no exposure going on. Yeah. So, you know, all the typical people, like Bob Marley, Stevie Wonder, I really didn't know them. So those years were like, oh my God, who's this, who's this, you know? Yeah. I mean, you're a younger artist, but, you know, you've been influenced by some of these greats from the past, um, you know, as your main influences. Do you consider yourself like an old soul? Um, oh, yeah, I mean, I've sort of been told that all my life. Yeah. Then, I mean, I'm still, too, I'm so silly. I feel like I'm, I'm still young, but, you know, I'm not like that sometimes. <laughs> um, I suppose I am, you know, but, um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, you know, what kind of led to your music career and, you know, how did you get your big break? Um, well, I won Ireland's national song and competition at 15. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of from there, you know, I made a, a newspapers over in Ireland and, some radio interest manager and um, manager was like oh I think we could get a deal in Ireland or, or the UK and I was like nah <laughs> he was like what do you mean I said I'm only doing America oh, that was wow. my like big childhood dream because that's where all the people I live for from yeah. and he's like oh I don't know that's going to be hard and I said well I was just seriously uh, what do you call it stubborn yeah. full attitude <laughs> 15, 16 year old and um, but it did serve me well at the time because we did get it in the end and um, got a lot of record label interest um, mm. from this, this magazine called A&R Worldwide really supported us and um, set my music to some labels and then before I knew I had um, a big trip planned where I showcased for like 12 major record labels and got a few offers Mm -hmm. and signed then on my 17th birthday. <laughs> cool. You know, y you became known as the soul of Ireland. What was the process like of, you know, becoming known outside of your home country, you know, uh, here in the U.S. and just globally? It was scary. I mean, I think, like, I was always on the move. Once I had a manager, you know, he was always like, got a gig, we got a gig, so everywhere I went I did, mm -hmm. just a solo piano on my voice. And, you know, there was a lot of hard gigs, you know, unknown, and this black girl was being so with the talks, crazy, and, and these Irish accents, and people were like, what the hell? And <laughs> just, you know, yeah. overwhelmed, so, so I mean, basically. And um, so it was hard, you know, and I was very young, and I didn't have a sense of style, so I was quite rejected, I guess, but I mean, I really didn't, so... There was a lot of kind of putting on the mask, trying to appear like a, you know, professional that really scared shit was inside. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it worked in the end and um, just kind of, I don't know if I could do it again. I think it, it was good at that age because, you know, when you're in your teens, you get something in your head and 
can be so stubborn and cold, it can be really good. So I just kind of was like, you know what, I'm just going to keep gigging and mm-hmm. keep singing my heart out and hopefully, you know, people will take to it. And, and, and that's kind of what I did and I'm unfortunate enough that that's what's happened now, you know? Yeah, cool. So, you know, on your debut album, you know, I was reading that you, you wrote everything on there, you wrote all the songs. Um, where do you develop that skill for writing? Well, you know, I started singing when I was 13, and I never sang before that. And um, I just literally remember the piano room in school that nobody used, and I had a friend who prepared some songs, and was like, can you teach me, teach me a few of those songs? So she, she taught me, and then I was just like, oh, this is cool. Mm-hmm. It's easy, and I love things that are easy. I have it's just, you know, anything that's still challenging, I just my attention span. Mm-hmm. So I was like, this is easy. So um, I just kept playing and playing, and I, I, I was able to hear things on the radio, which just like, and then I was able to figure out what it was. And then again, that got to do mm-hmm. work, and I like the easier option. But, but I would just make up my own song. This is easier. Yeah. And just kept literally playing around, literally tapping the piano until something sounded good. And then I was like, oh, maybe I'll just do this, do this. And um, then before I knew it, I had like hundreds of songs. I just didn't wow. like writing them. Cool. So you'll be releasing your new EP, The Brooklyn Sessions, Volume 1, next month. Um, you know, what were you looking to accomplish with that? See, I wanted that out at like, Christmas time for my fans who are patient waiting, but yeah. I think it tend to take forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, now well, like, I'm like, I am so sorry for my fans that been like, hey, what came this January? Yeah. Every part. But um, I just wanted to do, I, honestly, it was very simple. I went in with my band that I tour with, and I said, guys, hear some songs, and let's go in, you know, I was going to keep up there. I was going to go to the studio and I was like, let's just go in and mm-hmm. record these. Don't think of albums or producers, just play intently and then um, let's record it. And let's put this out, you know, because um, you know, sometimes it can be, you know, the whole political, like what you put out can be so, uh, just take away the whole joy of music. And, and it was really liberating, actually. Mm-hmm. And then we decided to call it like sessions so that I'm gonna do this now, you know, in between whatever I feel like say to people. We're in between albums, whenever that people know once it's booking sessions on two, three, four, or whatever, it's just me and my guys in the room. Yeah. And what you see is what you get. Cool. So this is gonna be a lead up to your next full length album. Um, you know, how's the progress coming along that album? Uh for it sounds so beautiful and I just I love it I really do yeah. um, and that is amazing and um, yeah, I really like that I grew up with the hype and um, I do make it with the and um, Rex Ryder and Jay and Alex and the producers on the album mm-hmm. and um, yeah well literally I got back on the uh, Weeks and probably a few more weeks, and should be and just like some mixing ready to go. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. And uh, finally, um, you know, I, I read you made your acting debut on the show One Tree Hill. Uh, just talk about what the whole experience was like. Oh my god, I was like, what a um, ego first. Telling it that home hold me so much, I only realized I was like, wow. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, when you go in and walk on stage, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got this, I'm the obvious singer, I'm so cool. But yeah. Just, uh, walk into a movie, to act, and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Oh my God, I was looking back at school again. I didn't know it was a new girl, and I was so nervous. I'm not an actress, I've never done I mean, see things in school like we all have, but, you know, it was. Mm-hmm. It was Definitely, I was totally out of my comfort zone, um, but, you know, God bless me, and it was a great opportunity. Met some nice people, and um, met her new staff, and um, it was really grounding, it was just nice, in a way, 
I think with God being like, oh, girl, you know, you're good at one thing, but there's, there's loads of things in life that, you know, I'm not good at. And I'm not saying yeah. I'm not good at acting, but that I don't, I'm not going to match, you know. Mm-hmm. So he's very nice, he's very humble. 